What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we've got a lot of upgrades to do. Specifically, we're gonna be using a 3D printer to upgrade a laser engraver, and then using that laser engraver to upgrade the experience of using a 3D printer. And huge shout out to Longer for sponsoring this video. We're gonna be using the Longer LK5 Pro 3D printer. It's a big work surface, really high quality printer. Allows you to print all of these upgrades pretty much in one go. And the laser engraver will be the Longer Ray 5 with that new 10 watt module very high power, you can really blast through some wood. So in today's video, I wanted to show the strengths of 3D printing and laser engraving and when to use those parts as tools in any project you might do going forward. First off, we're gonna be upgrading the laser engraver using 3D printing, cause that's the one I'm a little more comfortable at and I modeled up some amazing designs. These make upgrading it very easy. So the big benefit of 3D printing is your precision, how much you can make very accurate, easy parts. And this is an amazing example of it. These are corners we're gonna be using for building an enclosure. Now, if you're the type of person where if I told you to make a box out of wood, you'd say, easy, I can make it quickly and precisely, this isn't for you. But for someone like me who either I could take all day to make a precise box or I'd do it quickly and it's not very precise, using this to make your corners straight makes it so easy. It's designed to be used quarter inch sheets of wood or also foam board. I use foam board for some of the faces of the box since it's cheaper and lighter weight. Some people might say it's dangerous to use foam board as an enclosure of your laser engraver, but they also use wood. Here's an example of what foam board does under a laser. I don't see this as vastly more dangerous than using a wood enclosure and I'm always nearby. I have a fire extinguisher nearby and I'm never leaving this running unattended. It's not like a 3D printer where I would run it and then go to bed and come back in the morning. A laser engraver, I'm always more on edge and very careful around. So I think it's fine to use foam board in this case. I also modeled up this air assist nozzle. This will mount directly onto the 10 watt module and allow you to attach an air hose to the back I will attach the links to all of these 3D files in the description down below, as well as any products I used in the description down below. An air assist really helps keeping down the charring on your wood, especially if you're gonna be cutting instead of engraving. Engraving, you might not need an air assist, but if you're really trying to cut through, that's a lot more power you're trying to put into the wood. And I did model this so it can be printed with no supports if your printer is good at overhangs. But you might need a raft on the bottom to get good bed adhesion. It likes to tip over like that. And now let me take you outside to see it all in action. So now that I've got this rigged up and working, I can now talk you through it. It's very much a unique design because I wanted some unique functionality that I hadn't seen other people use online in other designs. There's plenty of other designs of laser engraver enclosures, but this one I think is great for what I want out of it. First off, the obvious one, this clamshell design here. This opens and closes like this so I can enclose the 3D printer or so I can enclose the laser engraver or open it up, be able to access it. I wanted to do this because if I'm swapping out laser engravers, testing different ones, comparing them, I wanted easy access to be able to fully pull it out or put it back in. And the next big use case is to be able to engrave on larger boards, big long things. I can lift this up and use it just as a regular laser engraver sitting here set it on the workpiece I'm working with. And to build this, I relied mostly on 3D printing to be my precision tools. I created these corner pieces and there are eight of them holding the eight corners of the box together. This way, anyone at any level of skill, just so you have a 3D printer, would be able to build this. You simply press the corners together and then I use duct tape to seal up the edges. That way, no, none of the laser light will be able to escape and get you in the eye. I use foam board for the front and top to make it lighter and quarter inch wood panels on the sides here. I wanted wood on this side to give this a little bit more rigidity. This is the exhaust on this side. But more 3D printing I used, the hinges on the back are 3D printed. I will link all of these files in the description down below. Also the mount up top, this handle was 3D printed and this is a 3D printed carabiner that just is tied to a string tied to the ceiling. That way it holds things up and out of the way. And I had been using this for several weeks and it hasn't fallen apart on me. And I left it for a long weekend up like this just to make sure nothing's gonna fall apart or any of the stresses on it wouldn't be too much. The next part of 3D printing that didn't fully work out for me, but I did a lot of design on, was the exhaust over here. I initially created this. This is a scaled up version of the exhaust system that I put on my Voron. But on the Voron, I have a filtration system on there so it can filter the air and still release it into the same room you're in. Here, on a laser engraver, it really is better to be able to exhaust it out somewhere else. So I have this tube running to the front of the garage. 
it's exhausting into the world outside, which is gonna be way easier than passing it through carbon filters and HEPA filters. But I will release these. If anyone's interested in them, let me know in the comments down below and I will release them. Otherwise, I'm probably not gonna take the time to post them since I'm not even using them. But if you want them, I will post them for you. And when it comes to the fan setup here, I have a 120 millimeter fan here. It's attached via USB. It's USB powered by this power strip over here, which has USB and full 120 volt plugs. And then there's a 120 volt fan in line with this tube that gives it a li little bit more boost pulling more air out of this enclosure. That way you can be nearby this while it's working and you don't get all that nasty, smoky, sooty smell. And I did use four inch tubing here. That's just because I had some four inch tubing sitting around. But if I was starting fresh and buying it all from new, I would probably go ahead and upgrade to six inch tubing and a six inch fan. They're similar in price, but will give you a bit more airflow and more exhaust. The next design choice I made was not putting any sort of windows to be able to see into the enclosure. Some people use just generic orange acrylic, or you can buy the more expensive ones that are rated at laser blocking orange acrylic. But I thought a better way than that is to not have any windows on here. So instead I'm using this webcam that's gonna be connected up to my laptop since the laptop is always here running light burn while I'm using the laser engraver. It's really easy to just have a webcam in here, being able to see the print as it's running while sitting outside, and there's no risk of any lasers getting out or damaging your eyes. I also 3D printed an air assist for the longer Ray 5's 10 watt module, and that makes cutting so much better. It's amazing the performance differences when you have a little stream of air blowing on your print. Just cooling it down and stops those flare-ups that can happen when you're cutting at slower speeds. So the air pump is over here. Again, I will link those in the description down below. It's powered off the same power strip over there, and this tubing goes over here to that printed part in there. In any complex design, there's always design choices you have to make, and I did decide to block using that cylinder focusing rod that comes with it. So now it does require you to use a focusing plate like this. This you just slide between the laser shield and the part. You put it right on there, tighten it down, move the plate out of the way, and then you're perfectly in focus, ready to go. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's also LED strip in here. That is a USB powered LED strip. And that's what it looks like on. That way there's lights in here that the webcam can pick up and see what's going on inside of there. And normally I have it all connected to the single power strip so I can walk out here, turn on the power strip that turns on the laser, the fan, the air assist, these lights, and it's entirely on off with a single switch. So when I'm done using it, I can just flip that switch and it turns the entire system off. If I did want to turn off one or two parts, I could just unplug them, but it's really convenient being able to turn on or off the entire system from a single switch. So now that I've explained how the system works, I can show you how I set it up to get it running because we got one last cut we've got to do while working on our upgrade for our 3D printer using the laser engraver. You can simply lower it down. A bit of doubled up duct tape I put around the edges to be able to block any stray light because I'm not relying on myself to be able to cut a straight line or here you might have some wires that need to tuck underneath and this duct tape will sort of form a gasket on the edge to be able to hold things down and block any stray lights. So now over at Lightburn, you can just hit start and this is pretty much the view you get. So here from the webcam I can see an eye level view of what the laser is up to. So now when the cut is done, it's nice and loud because all these pumps and fans are on. I can just click that, it cuts everything off. And lift up this side of the box. Clip it up and out of the way. And now we just gotta go put this together. And now that we've got the laser engraver fully upgraded and working great, we can go back to upgrading our 3D printer, or really just the 3D printer experience. One of the big benefits of a laser engraver is that it can handle big projects. On a 3D printer, you can handle big projects, but it takes so much more time that a laser engraver can just blast through. And the easiest way I've found for creating laser engraving files, especially for beginners, is these auto-generated parametric models. You put in your various parameters and it auto-spits 
spits out the design for you. This is the website we're gonna be using for this project and it has so many different designs on there. Right now we're gonna start with a pretty basic one. It's a tray to hold all of our various tools for 3D printing. I always have so many tools next to the 3D printer. Any amount of organization will really help me out. So here's the website we're gonna start with, boxes.py. And to begin with, go down to parts and samples and the burn test will really help you to know what offset you need between the edges of the box. So here I can step you through. First is your size of your inner width. I'll step this down a little bit just to save wood. Steps 0.01 is fine. Pairs of two is fine. Thickness, put in the thickness of your material. That is important so that the teeth of the box will really fit together well. Format DXF. I like to use DXF. That gives you a file you can import into Lightburn. I use Lightburn because it's a really easy software to use. You can leave tabs, leave the labels, reference. I take that to zero. Burn, I start this at 0.06. For the longer Ray 5, at least with the 10 watt module, that's the only one I've tested it on, I feel like 0.07 is a good distance. And thus you have to start all the way down at 0.06 to be able to cover that correct range. And then you can generate. If I do it in SVG, it opens it as a new page so I can show you right now. So this is the file we're gonna be cutting. Since it does have all those extra teeth on the edges, we really can step this down a bit. Let's try 50. There we go. So 50 will give us three teeth on each side and we can scale down the font in Lightburn later. You just select those items and scale down the font. Really easy to do. So then after you cut this out, this is what you'll get in these little pieces that fit together. Just match up corresponding numbers, 0.09 by 0.09. Start at the biggest, that will give you the loosest fit. And these are still pretty loose in there. So then you step it down again, 0.08 by 0.08. So it's getting more snug, but still has a fair amount of wiggle room in there. 0.07 by 0.07, fit those together. And this is the size I really like on this laser. At least for me, it's giving a little bit of wiggle room, but it's still very secure in there. It's not gonna fall out. Then 0.06 by 0.06 is very tight and kind of hard to force in there. I could like break it together. But that's not really what I want. You want a little bit of gap so you can get glue in there. And on more complex parts, it'll be even harder to fit together a bunch of pegs into a bunch of holes all at the same time. So now we know the burn distance of our laser. We can go back to the home page here. And for today, we're gonna to be doing the type tray. This gives us a multi-segmented box that can hold a bunch of different tools or parts, spare glue sticks. There's so many different things you can put into a tray like this. And here it'll tell you this 50 millimeters times three will be three segments wide by three segments deep. On ours, we're gonna do four segments wide by three segments deep. Heights will be this outer wall section and then you can set a different height for the inside. So we're gonna do 100 millimeters on the outside rim and 80 millimeters on the inside. I think it just kind of looks better. For me, I don't have a functionality difference. I just kind of like the look of that slightly inset inner side. And with this, you can put various different bottom edges or top edges. The bottom edge, we're gonna do this H option, parallel finger joint holes. I think it looks so good when it's done, but you can do several different edges. You could do stackable, so it will be a bottom finger joint. And so if you want a bunch of these to be able to stack on top of each other, you set the bottom edge to stackable and the top edge as well to stackable. And then they will have these finger joints and you can just stack a bunch of these tall. But for us, I want a straight edge on top and an H edge parallel finger joint holes around the bottom. There's a bunch of other settings you can put in here. Here's a grip hole you could put in there. That way, if you're putting this somewhere and you wanna be able to slide it out, that will give you a little handle on the edge to be able to hold onto. I don't want that on this case. Thickness, put in your thickness of your wood. Today, we're gonna to be using this quarter inch wood, which is about six millimeters. And with these, I do like to go a little over rather than a little under. That way you can sand off these burned edges and it'll look a little bit nicer. Format. Let's stick with SVG so I can show you the example it puts out. But then for the real use case, I would use the .dxf. Reference set to zero and burn. This is where we can put in our .07 that we found from these examples. And so this is the picture of our cuts we have here. We just need to cut out all of these and then we can put them together. This also does a separate color for your inset cuts and your outside. That way you can do them in that order. For these bigger cuts, it's nicer to cut the little 
inset cuts and then do the perimeter outside. If you cut the outsides first, it could shift a little bit and then your inside cuts might not look as nice. So this way it's nice to do this blue first and then the black section second. And since I've already got all of these cut out, we can skip to the assembly section. So here we are with all of the parts ready to go. There is a bit of charring around here and I did have to do some cleanup afterwards where it didn't fully cut through. And I did a ton of testing to try to figure out what settings would work well here. And then I found this video where someone's using a CO2 laser and he's struggling to cut through certain parts of this cheap veneered plywood. This is just a cheap veneered oak veneered plywood that I picked up at a local hardware store. And basically the issue here is that this isn't made for laser cutting, so there's gonna be a lot of inconsistencies in there. So certain parts my test cut would cut straight through there and I'd get a beautiful looking cut. But then on this, you can see examples where certain parts were barely cut at all and then certain parts were blasted through way too powerfully. So if you're gonna do a lot of laser cutting, don't try some random quarter inch wood if you're using something as thick as quarter inch, try to find something that's made for laser cutting. I will link that video you can go check out since he is more experienced at laser cutting and knows what he's talking about. But in the end, I did get these cut out and we've got all these parts ready to put together. And now that it's done, you can put in any tools you want, a little utility knife, scraper, some screwdrivers, some glue stick, more pliers. I haven't even used up half of this. Some Sharpies, some more Sharpies, and still I haven't filled it up. Another spatula, another pin. All of these tools all fit in here easily and still room for more. And this is all of the tools I could possibly need and more, and there's room for more. Instead of this mess of stuff on your desk, keep it organized, keep it ready to go. Carry this around really easily. And this is only my first attempt at making a box like this. That website has so many amazing designs on there. This one, I didn't end up even gluing it together. I might put a dab in the corners here to hold it together, but because I went so tight and the cut wasn't great because the wood was so thick and the glue was so inconsistent, I need to order some better wood for laser cutting. And so I think future boxes will be better, but even this is so useful, so functional and fast. This took about an hour of cutting versus if you were to 3D print something this size, that could take a day at least. So I think that's one of the big design strengths of a laser cutter, being able to cut out large designs like this in so much faster time. You can't make the small intricate designs that you can on a 3D printer, and it's still nice and strong. If I tried to 3D print something like this in an hour trying to do vase mode, this thing is so flexible I could break it without even trying. This is really strong and sturdy and holds together well. And I think this makes an amazing addition to your 3D printer, being able to tackle different parts of a project. You can use different materials, woods, acrylics, things you can't 3D print, but now you can tackle a project using 3D printing or laser engraving. Well, anyway, that wraps up. I hope this has inspired you to make things and kind of given you some ideas of ways you can upgrade your experience of using different tools. Each one has its own strengths and weaknesses, and I think using multiple tools allows you to really work to all of those strengths in a bigger project. If there's any of these little things you have more questions about, let me know in the description down below, or maybe I could cover an entire video more elaborating on certain parts of it. The air assist is one thing I will do a more deep dive in the future once I get some more experience because it's not as black and white as I thought it was. There were some times when I was getting better engravings using no air assist rather than some air assist, so I'm still working on that. I also have so many more designs and boxes I want to cut out of wood, but I do need to get some better wood first. This is kind of a 101 course covering using laser engravers and 3D printers and all the amazing things you can make out of them. Huge shout out to Longer for sponsoring this video and sending over their LK5 Pro 3D printer and Ray5 laser engraver. They really are both great tools that I would genuinely recommend anyone considering if you're in the market for one of those products. Well, I think I finally covered it all. Go out there and create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.